successful in the last several years transforming the reserve components into an operational force. When you call up a unit out of Wyoming to go to Iraq or Afghanistan, Wyoming goes to Iraq and Afghanistan because everybody back home wants to know what's going on. I think the biggest thing is is for our, our civilians and our soldiers that had to, uh, you know, to brag from Atlanta to Fort Bragg. You know, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, they're here on ground. There's been a lot of hard work. Uh, I think the big picture for the total Army Reserve is the, the symbolism of this building, of showing the, you know, again, that operational force and where we've come as an Army Reserve. Initiatives that Lieutenant General Stoltz started last year to realign the staff, to truly create one Army Reserve staff, has allowed us to focus on the operationalization. We work hand in hand in the Arfordgen model, the fourth generation model. Which units are needed, where do we want to put them on the patch chart, and this will make us much more responsive, much more flexible, and much more agile. The Army Reserve has become an operational force since 9-11. Two-thirds of our medical resources are in the Army Reserve, so the Army can't go to war without us. Our transportation assets, many of them are in the Army Reserve, MPs, engineers, water units, railway units. Um, so we bring a lot of value added to the Army. We're actually doing a, a class for search and extraction where uh, where they teach us how to go into vehicles, buildings, any type of situation, confined space to save lives. With knowing a little know-how, ingenuity, like we're getting taught down here, you can help out people quicker. A lot of things that are really available for active duty soldiers aren't as readily available for the Army Reserve soldier. So Yellow Ribbon really came about to put all these tools in one place at one time for the family and the soldier to benefit. This is an offering to our soldiers to offer them support, to offer them resources, and to offer them uh, help that was never given to soldiers in previous wars. My second appointment I came back, the Yellow Ribbon was available. And so I think 30 or 60 days after we got back, we were supposed to go to Yellow Ribbon, and I went. And it was pretty good because here I was, I had 30 days back home with my family, and I find myself talking to people that were expecting me to come back, and they had information that was there to help me get back on my feet. I'm living on an installation, and I see what the families get. And I wanted to bring the same to our families that don't live near an installation. We call it the Army Strong Community Centers. We've helped people and they think that these should be everywhere and that's what we're um, endeavoring to do. We had people from the Navy, the Air Force, the National Guard, the Marine Corps and the Coast Guard. And I knew we had a winner. I am delighted that this center is here to provide that kind of outreach and help for families. Use it. Finally, let me say thank you. We are here to help our nation. We do it for a country we all deeply love. Well, I think the short answer is better use of resources that we've been given. Um, in many respects, it's, it's a vision for the future as well. Looking down the road 10, 15, 20 years to determine you know, what condition the Army Reserve ought to be in and then backcasting to where we are today so that we can develop, you know, programs and procedures that will allow us to get there. So in many respects in this, you know, ever diminishing resource environment, we're trying to take the resources that we've been given and make the best use out of them. The purpose of the continuum of service is to ensure that soldiers are soldiers for life. And so we want to create an opportunity for soldiers to transition between the active component and the reserve component, because every soldier is at a different stage in their life and in their career. So the great thing about the Army Reserve is we're a skill-rich, community-based force. And so when you think about a soldier for life, it's about leveraging these skill sets in different ways. You know, the report we get back from some of our employers is our soldiers come back to work with a different mentality. 
a different level of maturity, a different level of responsibility, a different le level of leadership. So it's a win-win situation for both of us when we get the added value of their civilian skills and when they get their added value of the leadership and maturity that we provide when they go back into their civilian employment. Our employers get a soldier that's going to do something that every business leader wants. They're going to provide, uh, deliver results and they're going to be great leaders. And so this is another opportunity for us to showcase the great skill sets that our soldiers have. What you have is soldiers who are employees, who are moms and dads, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, who are willing to voluntarily raise their hand and say, I want to serve my nation. 